Welcome to the Perinet Podcast by Focus on the Family Singapore. The youth is the hope of our future. Join us as we hear the voices of the next generation and discover how best to support them in life and love. Hello and welcome to the Parent Ed Podcast. My name is EJ and I am your host for this episode. Bullying. Bullying is really painful for any child to go through. And for some, it leaves permanent scars that affect their confidence and esteem for years to come. On this episode of our Parent Podcast, we will be delving into the sensitive yet vital topic of childhood bullying. We're going to hear firsthand from a teenager who has experienced being bullied and what gave him the courage through that difficult period to bounce back stronger and becoming more resilient. We have guests today, a father and son duo, Gunnison and Carvey. Welcome, both of you, Gunnison and Carvey, to our Paranet podcast. Welcome. Hi, EJ. Hi, Thanks Gunnison. Thanks for inviting us. Hi, thanks for inviting us onto this podcast. Thank you, Gunnison and Carvey. It's so good to have both of you on our Paranet podcast. Thank you once again for joining us. And as we begin this episode, I would like to get both of you to introduce a little bit more about yourself, what you do. Let our listeners know a little bit more about you. Maybe we start with Gunnison. I'm Gunnison Maniam. I'm in the civil service and I'm an active volunteer with a few other organizations. I'm also an active volunteer with our parent support groups and also Center for Fathering and SG Families. I have two young children. My eldest is JS3, 15, and my son, Kavi, is 14 years old. Hello everyone, my name is Kavi Ganison. This year I'm turning 14. I am a secondary school student. Great, so good to know more about you. And we're gonna dive straight away into our topic for today about bullying. And I'm gonna start with you, Kavi. Could you tell us a little about what actually happened in your encounter with bullying and through the experience, how did you respond as well? Tell us a little bit more. So what basically happened was when I started my primary school, I used to get harassed and bullied by older boys from my class. So I go onto the school bus, but they always relentlessly spray me with water. And that annoyed me, but I couldn't do anything because I did not want to get in trouble. Even though I tried ignoring the situation, I hope it resolved on its own. The bullying persisted. I told some trusted friends in my school and they urged me to inform the class teacher. I was hesitant at first, but I thought if I told the teacher, then it would go away. So with my best friend, I reported it to the teacher. And then the teacher referred me to the school counsellor for support and recovery. Thank you, Kavi, for sharing that was at a young age you encountered bullying. Were there other instances of bullying that you encountered later when you were older as well? Yes, there are many other situations that happened. In the next year of P2, I had an older friend who was a bully. Basically, he always like bullied me and threatened me to like punch me. But then it escalated. So in P5, I was walking down the stairs. He was playing around, but then he knocked into me. So he got quite angry and then he pushed me down the staircase. That wasn't the last straw though. In P6, during science class, he would ask me to do things that I wouldn't want to do. Like doing some unnecessary things during class. And like trying to annoy the class and disrupt it. But I would refuse. So it was in a science lab. He would basically spray me with the chemicals. I got annoyed, but I couldn't do anything. Because I was scared that I would be scolded. But in the end, right... He got angry because I wouldn't do any of his orders, so he punched me and it left quite a bruise. I didn't tell my parents about it until they found out on their own. Then they told the teachers along with me. We tried and resolved the situation. We told the teachers to try and educate the boy first before resorting to caning, but he also had bullied another boy in my same class. Thank you, Carvey, for braving through the storm and being here today to share with us your lived experience. And maybe for all of us who are listening to this episode, tell us a bit more when you were going through those stormy period of facing the bullies and the bullying experiences. How did you feel? It was actually quite scary and traumatic. I had the feeling of like, I could not do anything at all. Like, I couldn't tell anyone. I could only confide in my friends, but how much could they do to a teacher and parent that I can't tell? So I had it cooped up inside of me until finally, like, I broke down. Then I told my mom and dad. 
And when you were going through the bullying situation, you did share that you managed to talk to your friends and only at the later stage, you shared with your parents. Maybe on behalf of the parents who are actually listening to this podcast, we would also like to ask, why didn't you share with your parents at an earlier stage and only later? Most children like me are actually afraid of bullies because they don't think that the parents or teachers would do anything. These bullies will seem like very tough and try and threaten them so they will feel scared and not to tell myself included because when the bully threatened me right i was very scared i felt i couldn't tell anyone not even my own parents so the only people i could confide in was my friend but even then what more could they do the fear was really real and the fear was towards the bully the fear was also probably what your parents would respond as well earlier you mentioned that there was help given to you from the school and from your parents as well. How did you feel after it when they stepped up to support you? After they went out to support me, I actually felt a whole lot relieved than before the situation. As Then I knew I had someone, a person beside me holding on my shoulder. So they would support me no matter what. No matter what I go through, like bullying or assault or harassment. Thank you, Karvi. I think your words really encourage many of us, including myself as a parent, to know that when we step out to help a young person, to help our children, it means a lot to them. So over to you, Gunnison. Karvi has been really brave to share his experience and now maybe you want to shift your attention to ask about you as a parent. When you first heard from Karvi about his bullying encounters, how did you feel about this? I really felt angry, frustrated, why this is happening to Kavi? Because normally he's a very bubbly boy, although he's very quiet, timid, but at home he's very active, he engaged in conversations and all that. But eventually when he was bullied, right, he became very quiet because in our house itself, we have a corner, we call it cozy corner. Whenever we got any things we want to discuss with my children or my wife, right, even the children or my wife will say, can we meet at the cozy corner? We will meet over a cup of coffee or even tea. Then we will discuss what happened. So it's during these times, during our meetup at the cozy corner, where Kavi came out to talk about bullying and stuff like that. Say he was being bullied and all that. I feel really frustrated. I say, why must this be happening to my son? I don't want people to take advantage of situation and bully another person. Gunnison, could you tell us a little bit more? Because as a parent myself too, I can really identify with a lot of emotions and thoughts that were going through our hearts and our minds when we see our children being bullied in this case. What was going through your mind? How did you end up a point to decide on what course of action you would want to take? Honestly, right? At first, I was a bit puzzled because it was in P1, P2 level. So I do not know what to do. So I met up with some fathers I told them that this is a situation, my son was being bullied, even in school bus, even in school. So they told me to go and approach the school, the teachers, and tell them what is happening. So whereby teachers can help to rectify the issue so that my son will not be bullied. But at first, I was reluctant. After a bit of persuasion from my wife, I decided that I need to tell the school that this has been happening not only for Kavi, so that other children in the school will not be bullied. Wow, you know, that's really something for us to take back and to consider as well, because you rightly pointed out that while with many thoughts going through your mind, yet you had a group of friends, fellow fathers whom you spoke with and had a little bit of like a consultative discussion and they gave you some pointers and that's how you took the next step to actually went ahead to speak to the school leaders or the school teachers as well. Maybe elaborate with us a little bit more on that point. How was the response from the school's end after you gave them that feedback and comments regarding this bullying incident? At first, the school was shocked that this has happened to Kavi because I used to send my children to school, fetch them and all that. So being active member in the parent support group, they know me. But I also do not want to make use of this opportunity to go and tell the school about this, keep on complaining and all that. I also feel that I need to put a stop to this bullying because I do not want other students to be affected. And the school took it in the correct strike. They also approached the bully itself to solve the issue. 
But I always wanted the school not to punish the bully itself. I always tell them, please educate the bully. Because there's definitely a reason why the bully is doing this. There's always a back end that the bully is going through certain kinds of issues. He can be at home or even in school with other children and all that. So I always tell the school, please educate the bully. Even to the last stage, right? I even told the school not to punish the bully, but educate. The last straw was when the boy went to bully some other students and quite a number of our parents had complained. Wow, I thought that was so insightful from you to remind all of us that as we look at the situation, while we want to defend our children, you have brought up a good point to also empathize even with the bullies themselves too, because they might be going through some of their own struggles and challenges too. You mentioned that in your home front, you have a little cozy corner that you have set up where you know, that was a place where Carvey opened up and shared about his bullying incident. Could you tell us a little bit more in your home how did you make a decision to have something like that, a, a cozy space, a little cozy corner? What inspired you to come up with something like that? Actually, it started off with my wife. She is the one who always decorates the house and all that. So she come and tell us, why not we have a different set of furniture on this side? And eventually, we have some toys around. There's a swing. There's a small couch where we can sit down. We can chit-chat. I also thought that it was a very good idea whereby the children will feel at ease. Any one of us will feel at ease. So we can just talk about whatever happened for the day or even for the week. Even we are busy at work, right? We will meet there. So we will discuss about what happened. And not only we talk about our children, our children also will ask us, how's your day at work today? Is there anything you want to share with us about work or what happened? Any interesting thing happened today? And this is how we share. And I really find the cozy corner has really helped us in my family, like this bullying incident whereby my children are open for discussion and more open communication. And I feel that as a parent, we need to communicate more with our children to find out what is happening. Communication is a key to everything. Communication is the key to everything, especially with our children who might be going through a rough patch, a difficult time. All the more, these conversations are important. Kavi, I'm interested to find out from you. Now you have came through, you have overcome and you've become stronger and you're smiling. On hindsight, as you look back at the whole bullying experience, share with us what gave you the strength and the courage to have gone through all this. You see, the only few things that gave me the strength and courage to go through these things is the motivation of my studies and my friends and the urge to tell my parents. But even though I didn't tell them yet, I still knew they would be by my side no matter what. So I kept on persisting through these challenges and eventually I came out succeeding and came out stronger in the process as well. It's so good to see that you have such confidence in your parents. And I'm sure over the years, the relationship that has been strong, that has been built, has given you much more confidence that regardless of what you face in life, you know that they will be there to support and be the anchor for you. So with these confidence and that experience that you've gone through, if you encounter a bullying situation or a bully again in the future, what will your response be? If I would encounter a bullying situation in the future happening to me or anyone else, here's the advice I would give for any other person who needs it. First encounter with the bully, right? I would tell the teacher first. If it keeps persisting, I would tell my parents and my teacher so they can deal with it. But I wouldn't just like straight away if they did like a very serious bullying offense, I wouldn't tell them to like cane the student or anything. Instead, I tell my parents to try and tell them to educate the ch person instead. So maybe they won't do it in the future and learn. So that's what I would do. Kavi, you know, there are many young people who are younger than you right now who might be going through similar situations and, and they're not speaking up about it because as what you've gone through, they are fearful in many ways. What would be an advice you would share with a younger person, you know, who is probably facing bullying and they are fearful of reporting the incident or to the authorities? What encouragement or advice would you give to them? My advice to them is bullying may feel scary and overwhelming, but remember, you're not alone. Seek support. 
Process your pain with trusted adults and friends. You're never alone. Help is always available. Thank you. Such wise words that I'm sure many of our young people can take back and referring to a trusted adults. And how important is friends or social support to you in response to a bullying situation? Well, friends and social support are really quite important. I myself have few friends, but they are the good friends. You need to pick out what friends you have, so they'll be by your side no matter what. Like my parents say, would you rather have a lot of bad friends or a few very good friends? So you need those good friends and stick by them, and they'll stick by you too. Thank you, Karvi. So over to you, Gunnison, with the wisdom of hindsight right now, uh, there were any bullying situation happening to Karvi or your daughter, if you notice telltale signs, but he or she refuses to tell you, how would you respond? I think no matter what, as parents, we must stand by our children. We must stand by our children. We must communicate with them, talk to them nicely. I'm sure the children will open up to share what has happened and relate what is happening. So as parents, right, we cannot be judgmental. We cannot just simply judge and say, oh, you got bullied. Oh, okay, never mind. Go and tell the teacher. But we must find out what really happened first. Talk to them. Is there any issues between each other? Rather than just being judgmental, say, oh, maybe you must have done something. That's why the boy or the girl bullied you. So we cannot be judgmental. We must always stand by our children, communicate with them to find out what happened. So true. Not being judgmental on our children when they are being vulnerable to open up and share of their pains and their struggle with us. And I hear you, it's also about making that time and the effort to listen to them. As a parent asking a parent as well, you know, and modern day parents are often very busy, both are working. What's your advice to parents of today? You know, kids are facing bullying situation and many much more. How and what should parents do amidst of a busy lifestyle that we have to better communicate, have conversations with our kids? For me, in my family, right, as a father, it's our responsibility to teach our children the value of respect, the moral values, the respect and kindness. This is very important because I always emphasize even to my children about moral values. We must respect each other. We must always remind them that everyone deserves to be treated with dignity, Bullying is not a sign of strength, but a reflection of the weakness of the one who is bullying. I always tell them, let's stand out to stop bullying. As I hear Gunnison, you share, it is really about being able to articulate and live out the family values that each and every one of our family embraces. Again, it comes back to us, for all the parents listening to our parent podcast today, you know, we come back to not just teaching our children about strategies, about good knowledge, but also constantly reinforcing good family values that we believe in. And out of it, we're living out the values that we believe in as well. Whether is it response to bullying, whether is it how we communicate with our children to help resolve the bullying situation too. So I really appreciate our time here together with both Gunnison and Kavi for sharing us a very heartfelt topic that many of us as parents are very concerned about on bullying. And both of you have shared your personal experience. And I think today's sharing allowed all of us to better understand how you have straightened things out together through firm support from father to a son and building trust amidst of the challenging times, the face against fear and anxieties. So as we close up our podcast today, I would like to give both of you the final words to share some encouragement to our listeners. Gunnison, share a word of encouragement to all the parent listeners. Stand by our children, communicate with them, have open communication with them, talk to them more frequently and listen to them and don't be judgmental. Great. Kavi, many parents always love to hear from the young person. Your last words will be really powerful and inspirational for all our parent listeners. Share with them a word of encouragement, please. My advice to you is always check up on your children. They may be exhibiting signs of being bullied, such as nervousness or being quiet, as those were the signs I was exhibiting. That's how they found out. And always check up with your kids. Say hello, check up on their school, like, Ask them, how is your school today? So that they know that it was all going good. 
Because if you can check up on them, they might tell you what happened at school today. And also, if there are any children listening in, also make sure to talk with your parents regularly so at least they have a better understanding of you and your relationship will grow stronger so they can understand you significantly better. And always remember, like, you're never alone. There's always somebody going to be beside you. Friends, parents, the school counsellor, anyone. It's all right. This is so good. As I hear both of you share, I caught three C's from Kavi, the importance of checking in. Parents to have regular check-ins with our children. And from Gunnison, the whole ideas of constant communication, regular conversations. I really love Gunnison's idea of having that cozy corner in the home. And this is something that I take back. I'm inspired to set it in my own home as well. And I hope all the parents you are listening in, that's something you will have. Maybe it's a certain time, maybe it's a certain place, but have a place where children feel safe to share and for us to have check-ins with each other as Carvey has encouraged us. So for all the parent at podcast listeners, really, when we stand by our children and support them through difficult situations and in this episode as we talk about bullying, you know, our children will emerge from it even stronger and more certain and sure, confident of themselves than ever before. The key is to allow them to have a safe space to share, express their feelings and for us to be there and as Gunnison has shared, not to judge them. I hope you have benefited from this episode of our Parent Podcast and please feel free to share this podcast with a friend or a parent whom you believe and feel might benefit from today's episode. For more parenting resources, do visit our website family.org.sg. We hope you will keep tuning in to the Parent Podcast to learn and to grow in your parenting journey. So until next time, have a great week with your family.